What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp animator tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to show you how to create a moving construction animation with Animator. Um, before I get started, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this show, maybe you're interested in supporting the show, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I've actually done a video in the past about creating a construction animation using the section planes within SketchUp. And so I'm using the same model that I used before in order to do that. But basically what it has is it has kind of a job site um, space in here, as well as a tower crane, a construction trailer, and then also some, uh, it's also got columns for each level and slabs for each level. And so really what I wanted to show in this video is instead of using just a static using a static model, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create an animation where the pieces actually kind of slide into place so they move into place. And so what I've done right now, and the reason my model is up in the air right now, is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the pieces fly in from outside. And so what that means is I've already kind of set up my initial placement and actually I'm going to move my slabs back down here and I'm actually gonna move this down for a second. And I'm actually gonna move my slabs off to the side. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm just setting up my initial geometry location. And so what I wanna do is I wanna set my geometry up in such a way that it's sliding in from the outside. And so it's easier to just set that up initially where everything's already off to the side. And then what I've done is I've created a camera view as a view within SketchUp. So this is the view that or this is where my final camera is going to be. So this gives me an idea of where everything's going to fit within my view. And then all of my pieces, I've also created a view where I can zoom out and see where all my different pieces are just so I can move back and forth between them really quickly. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use Animator. Um, and in this case, we're going to use the Clip Editor in order to set this up. And so basically the way this works, and I'll link to another tutorial about Animator in the notes down below. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the unit movement functions within Animator. And so basically what that means is we're going to come into Animator and we're going to come over and we're going to click on this little box. And so in this case I'm going to click on the little box and I'm going to click on the option for new movement. And so now what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to set the movement of my object. So I'm going to add this in. So in this case, I'm going to click on the option for translation. And so when I click on the ob option for translation, what that's going to allow me to do is come in and select an object. So in this case, I'm going to select my job site animation or my job site geometry. So and that's just in here as site. So I'm just going to click on it. And once I click on it, what it's going to ask me to do is it's going to ask me to set a base point and then a final point for my um, for my job site location. So when I do this, I'm just going to click once over here and then once over here. And basically I'm telling this, I'm telling this to translate or move my job site from off screen to on screen in this animation. And I'm going to go ahead and click the, uh, the green check for save the sequence and exit. And I can go ahead and call this site movement or whatever it really takes for you to understand your organization. And so if I was to come in here, whoops, and set my timeline to zero seconds and then click the play button, you can see what happens is my job site now moves into frame. And so you probably want to figure out what duration you want your different scenes to be early. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and have one piece come in every two seconds. And so now I have my initial scene set up. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another translation movement. So I'm going to add a new movement. And in this case, I'm going to select my little job trailer. So I'm going to click on my job trailer. And then I'm going to click once to set my base point. And I'm going to click again to set my location inside my scene and I'm going to click the checkbox. And in this case I'll call this one job trailer. And so now you can see how these get added into your uh, timeliner off to the side here or your time bar. So now you can see how you have your first translation movement here. And if you mouse over the second one, you have your second translation movement here. 
And so now, if I was to click play, I would get my job site sliding in, and then I would have my construction trailer sliding in as well. And so really all I would do is just continue through for all the other parts and pieces within my model. So in this case, I would add another movement for my tower crane in order to have that drop down into my site. And so you would basically build on top of this in order to create your entire construction animation. And so I will note that the way you group all of your geometry is gonna make a difference here because you basically wanna group your objects based on how you want them to move. So in this case, I've grouped everything by slab and by level. So that way, that way I can animate the groups however I want to. All right, so now I have everything initially set up. So if I click the play button, it's gonna come through here and it's gonna show all of the animations that I just created. So it's gonna have your tower crane sliding in, your uh, different slabs, your different posts. So instead of these coming in here as, so instead of these coming in here as kind of static animation pieces using the section plane, these are actually moving parts and pieces coming in here. And so the other thing we could do if we wanted to is we could also create a camera view showing all of this. So let's say for example, that I wanted my camera to kind of orbit around this as it goes. So like, let's say that this is where we were gonna start at zero seconds. Well, what I could do is I could insert a camera right here and for now I would just capture the current view camera and click OK and we'll just set this as view one. And so that's telling it that at zero seconds we wanna set our camera to this location. Well let's say for example that down here at like 10 seconds in we want our camera to have kind of rotated around a little bit. Well what we could do is come in and click on the camera and insert another camera view and we could just fly around To a different view and we could maybe center that on our screen or kind of make it do whatever we want and we could click capture current view camera and we'd click the checkbox and so that would give us our second view and basically what that means is as we go now our animation is going to transition between those different camera views as we fly around so you can have kind of a flying view of this as it goes and so you could do this with multiple camera views. Like let's say I wanted this to continue and maybe at like 19 seconds, I wanted this to be a little further around, we could insert another camera. So we could just go up here and click on new camera again and we could fly around right here. And let's say for example, that we wanted this to get a little bit closer and maybe look up a little bit. So we could use the uh, look around tool in order to do that. And then you would just do the same thing where you'd capture your current view camera and then click the checkbox. And so now it would animate again between your second and third camera views. And then maybe I would insert one more view at the very end. So we just do the same kind of thing where we'd wanna end up right here on our final camera view. And so now between our third and fourth camera view, we would just animate again flying around here. And you'll notice that I'm trying to limit seeing the parts and pieces off to the side, which is why I've got this camera view going a little bit slower. But you can see how you can use this to create whatever kind of animation you want. And so two other quick notes. Um, so the first thing is right now, because of how far away um, up above, I've set these parts and pieces they're taking a little while to animate in. So if I was to click play, you can see how everything's kind of sliding in at the last second. Well, if I wanted to, what I could do is I could mess around with the animation easing. And so basically what the easing means is that affects how fast and slow your animation goes. So you can set it where part of an animation is faster. So in this case, um, if I wanted to, you can see how if I click on it, if I click on one of these scenes, then I look in my options bar, if I click the drop down 
for easing, um, basically you can tell, or if you watch the way the dots move as you mouse over this, that's gonna indicate how things are gonna go in your, uh, in your animation. So you can see how some of these, the dots like this one right here moves in really fast and then the final movement is a lot slower. So you could set this in this case where everything flies in really fast and then it slows down near the end of your camera movement. So like let's say for example, I added that to this scene and this one should be the level two slab coming in. That means it's gonna fly in really fast and then it's gonna slow down at the end. So you could use your easing in here to adjust the way your animation looks as well. And then once you've got your animation the way that you want it, you can export this to an animation file. And so basically the way that's gonna work is you're just gonna come up and you're gonna click on this button for generate a video for the film. So when you click on that, that's gonna pop up your options window. And um, note that I have options in here for different kinds of video exports, so MP4, MOV, that kind of thing. If you're using this for the first time, there's gonna be a button here saying that you need to download a plugin. I think it's called FFMPEG, FFMPEG. And basically what that does is that allows you to set the kind of um, animation that you create. So it's a plugin that allows you to create animations as opposed to your images sequence. So if you don't have that, you're just going to have a box over here asking you to download that. And you're going to have the option for images sequence, which would basically create a uh, image for every frame. And so in this case, you can see down at the bottom how many frames that's going to be. And so in this case, I'm just going to call this construction animation. And you can see down at the bottom, it'll show you how long your video is gonna be as well as the number of frames that are created. And so if you wanted this to go a little bit faster, you could export this at like double speed. So if you were to do this at double speed, you can see how your frame rate gets lower. So you can kind of adjust these settings to what you're looking for. And then the other thing you can do is you can create a test image. And so what the test image is gonna do is that's gonna show you basically how big the animation that's getting exported is created. So you can use this to get an idea of if this is doing what you want it to do or not. But I'm gonna go ahead and click the button for generate video and we're just gonna let this generate. All right, so once your video is created, you can come in here and you can click the play button in order to open the file that you just created. So in this case, this opens up the file and it runs it in my media player. So I can use this to play the actual MP4 video file that was created when we did our export. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you have ideas for other animator tutorials you'd like to see. Um, as always, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.